Hey everybody, 47 Mark 4 here with a quick tutorial on the basics of XNet. So let's say that you're somebody who's interested in playing with this and know nothing about it and you just want the minimum operations, the quick start guide. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the movement of energy, materials, and fluids. So what you're going to need to get into this mod is a controller. You're going to need some of this, a network cable, and you're going to need some connectors. Now, connectors come in two different varieties. I have both my regular connector and I have an advanced. We're going to work with regular today. The advanced has a couple of options. Uh, they can cycle faster, they can transfer more, and they can operate from sides that they're not connected to. They can emulate sides. But we're going to stick with uh, basic operations today. I think that's probably a little bit easier to understand. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab some of this stuff, actually. And let's come over to an example. So my example here is I've got power. I've got an input chest, a pulverizer, a redstone furnace, and an output chest. And I would like to, with one wire, move all of the materials and power them. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my controller down. Now, if I put my controller right next to a power source, I'm golden, it's going to charge. But if my power isn't touching uh, the controller, you're going to first need to give it power. And, you know, you can use whatever uh, duct or whatever you want, right? It is RF compatible. Once it has some power and can do operations, then we can make it bring power to itself. So no matter what you do, you've always got to put a connector on XNet itself. This is so, every, you know, XNet knows it's on the network and can control the other things. So very first thing we're going to do, let's disconnect power here is we're going to use XNet to transfer power. So I'm going to put a connector on my power source, XNet, and these other two blocks that need power. And in between them, I'm going to go ahead and run cable. And if you notice when I hit shift, it outlines everything that's XNet, and you'll need to hit shift to be able to use a cable on connectors. If you don't, you get the side dialog. And, you know, this is really so if this was connected to multiple things like this, you could come in here and turn one of the sides off, just like that. All right, it didn't like that at all. You can only have one controller per network. So let's go ahead and connect everybody together. Right there and right here. So now the controller will know about everything with a connector on it. So right in here, you can see I've got my power, I've got my eight channels, and the channels operate vertically, and I've got my machines. So if I click on a channel, it's going to go ahead and ask me what kind. So we're going to look at energy. Uh, we're not looking at logic or storage. We will look at items and we will look at fluids. So I'm going to start with an energy channel. I'm going to hit create. This right up here, you could name it if you wanted to. You can turn this channel on or off and you could delete the whole thing. I'm going to come over here to my coal generator where it intersects my energy channel. Click on the box and I get a create button. If I hit that button, this comes up and it's always set to insert first. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and say extract. This box went ahead and changed. And what I've got here is, this is really for insert. We'll get back to that. This is how much energy per tick do I want to transfer? Up to 10,000 RF a tick. Uh, so you could, you know, slow it down if you wanted to. This is how much to stop uh, when, it, when its supply doesn't have enough energy. Right, uh, my energy cell is running low. If I only had X number of RF in there, stop transferring. So I'm just gonna leave these blank. So I am now pulling power out of the coal generator. I'm gonna come to the next thing I wanna power. I'll hit create and I'm gonna say insert. And you know, I'm gonna do insert on all of these guys. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about was priority. So you can do on this channel, you can say, I want you to go to some things more than the others. So if I go ahead and say, oh, I want you to transfer here with a 10 priority, and this is a zero priority, 
higher numbers are more priority. So it will come here first and then power everything else. I could be handy, could not. And that's all it is for movement of energy, is extract from your source and insert. Now, that source, by the way, doesn't have to be, you know, a generator itself. So I'm going to go ahead and put a flex duct on there, and I'll put a connector on my flex duct, and I look in here, and there's my flex duct. And I can do the same thing, extract from the flex duct, and everybody's still all nice and powered up. Cool. So that's kind of number one, moving energy around pretty easy. Number two is I want to move items. So I have an input chest. I'm going to break my cable and I'm going to go ahead and put a connector on that. And I'm going to put a connector on my output chest and I'll hook that in. So now the network knows about all of these things. I'm going to go ahead and create a new channel. And on this channel, I'm going to go ahead and call it items and hit create. And I have my choice. I can either do it by priority, which means just like we saw with the energy, or I could do it round robin. And that might be handy if, let's say, you're pulverizing things and you've got multiple you know, ways to smelt it. You might want it to go in smelter one, then smelter two, something like that. Uh, doesn't really matter for our one block example. So on my energy channel, I'm going to come over here to this oak chest. I'm going to hit create. And I've got all of these options. So insert and extract again. So I'm going to do extract from this chest. It's asking me one item or a stack. I'll do one at a time. How often to transfer an item in the number of ticks, 10, 20, 60, 100, or 200. And then do you want me to go from the first uh, slot, the first available uh, random uh, locations or round robin? And you know, first usually works. Now, insertion priorities grayed out and the number that I wanna keep in the destination inventory. So I could do a keep stocked, right? Only keep five of an item in there. Uh, not handy for this example, but you know, it's a thing. This here is a whitelist by default. An empty whitelist will send everybody. Here is a blacklist. So, you know, send everybody but that right so it's just basic filtering so if i do a whitelist i could say oh only do gold ore and you know i'll go ahead and i'll throw my gold ore and my coal in here and so there's my extract now it could do ore dictionary matching if you have multiple kinds of ores or ingots or whatever you could do metadata or nbt matching um things like um enchanted items so i could turn this on or off and you know ignore them if i wanted to so i'm going to extract from this chest and i'm going to go ahead and put it in my redstone furnace or excuse me in my pulverizer now here's the thing to know a chest is sideless it doesn't matter what side you operate it from this piece of equipment is sided and it needs to be set to where the connector is uh, the advanced connectors can help out a little bit with this but this is something to know my personal warning do not change the ins and outs of some machines while it's actively transferring items that can lead to problems. So to uh, alleviate that, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to turn off the items channel for a moment. Let's go ahead and set the top of this one to in and out. So now it can do both through that connector. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Oh, missed it right there. And I'll come back over here. I'm going to turn my items channel back on. So extract from this chest, and I've filtered for gold, and go ahead and insert it right here into my pulverizer. And again, I've got priority. I've got uh, the maximum number I want to keep in here, all of these options. I just don't have these. Now, this stuff up here is more advanced, and I'm not going to cover those in this video. So I should find that my gold is now in this pulverizer. Very cool, that's exactly where it's supposed to be. So I'd like to take this gold out of here, and I'm gonna take some of this, and I wanna move it into the redstone furnace. Now here's the problem. In each channel, each block can only do one thing. It's either insert or extract. And since my pulverizer is already busy, I'm gonna create myself a new items channel. And I'm gonna say extract everything out of that pulverizer and insert it right here 
into the redstone furnace. Now, occasionally, this guy's going to make a byproduct. And I could set another side to, you know, catch the byproduct, and I could filter this. So I could do it, uh, we'll do it here on the extract side. It doesn't much matter. I could say, go ahead and only extract the pulverized gold and insert it into the redstone furnace. And over here, that's exactly what we've got. So it's gone ahead and moved them over. Now, I have a choice. I want to move from this furnace to this chest. So I could come in here and make another items channel and say, come from this furnace, extract, and go to this chest, insert. I could do that. Or I could reuse a channel. So right here, these blocks are empty. So I could do this. I could say, extract right here and insert. But now I have to be careful because this guy is extracting and this is extracting all the gold ore, and it's gonna to go to any place it can. And so if I tell it to go ahead and just insert here and not filter it, do I have any gold ore left? Let me take some of this and throw it in there, and it may end up, yep, right over here. But I could go ahead and I could come here and I could say, only do gold ingots. And now when I come back over here, you can see the gold ore stopped transferring. And as these guys get done, there they go. Right? So that's kind of the basic of moving items. You can make your channels as tight or as loose as you want. If you've got plenty of channels, hey, spread them out. It just costs you a little bit more energy per channel. Now, the thing to know is if, let's say, these were the same chest. So let me do this. Let's go ahead and make those the same chest. So when I come in here, uh-oh, which one is which, I can't tell. Well, you can double click on it and it will outline it with a red box. That's pretty handy. So I've got energy moving, I've got items moving, and you know, I could also get fluids moving. So it's gonna be the exact same operation again. I'm gonna go ahead and put connectors on those and I'm gonna add that into the network and let's go over here and let's add ourselves a fluid channel. So right there, create a fluid channel. And I'm gonna find my sink and I'm gonna extract right here. And this has slightly different options. So I've got my per tick extraction. I've got insertion priority. I have how much per operation. So it minimum is on this connector is 20 ticks per operation, so every second and every second I could move a bucket, but I could slow that down. And I could, again, keep a minimum in there so I don't run myself out. And I've got an option uh, to be able to filter, to be able to say, oh, only take water out, right? So that's, that's an option. So I'm gonna extract on this fluid channel. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick it in this black hole tank, just like that. And if I come over to the tank, we should see once a second, it's getting a bucket of water just that easy and so now i've got items energy and fluids moving around and kind of the last thing i want to do is this energy cell so let me stick a connector on the top of this one and i'll go ahead and set this side to accept and we'll put a cable in between so if you notice when we were in the very beginning right here on this energy channel there was this insertion priority well, let's say that I want to make sure that my machines are charged before my energy cell. So I had the controller on a priority of 10, the pulverizer on a uh, priority of zero, but we'll change that to 10 as well. I'm going to change this to 10 and 10 doesn't make any difference. It could be one as long as it's greater than something else. And then I'm going to say, insert my energy into uh, this energy cell and I'm going to keep it at a priority of zero. And let's do this. Let's grab ourselves a uh, new pulverizer, something that doesn't have any energy in it, right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one down. And just for safety, by the way, I'm gonna turn off these channels. Stick that right in there. I'll go ahead and set this one just the way I set the other one. Right? And this pulverizer, if you notice, because I didn't break the connector, kept everything and it's charging this and not charging that until that guy's got energy 
and then this one will start taking the excess. So that's a pretty good way of management. But there you go, I've got one cable that does all of this, and then when you're all done, and you've got all your cables run really nicely, you can get a facade, and you take your facade, and you can right-click it on a block, shift, and put it right over. And so this is a lot like conduits and conduit facades. It allows you to run uh, a lot of hidden wiring in one block space. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to get through today. Just kind of the quick how-to of XNet with some basic operations. Uh, we can talk about some more advanced things another time. So I'm 47 Mark IV, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hey, uh, drop me a like or a comment. I always, always look forward to seeing that. And then I will see you in another video.